Well, ban the lever actions and the six shooters and the double barrel shotguns. And we're going to look at the gunfight of OK Corral, which happened way back when in 1881. And uh, this is right off of Wikipedia. You know, it kind of goes uh, interesting bit of history because it pretty much uh, displays what's going on today. Except they're not trying to, they weren't trying to ban weapons back then. And we knew the Second Amendment was not to be violated. Uh, but today we got the Chicago Mafia in the White House. You know, Barack Obama, he's... But, you know, I don't mind him too much, to tell you the truth. <laughs> anyway, on December 28th, 20, 1881, 19, Virgil Earp was maimed in an assassination attempt by the outlaw cowboys on March 18th, 1882. They assassinated Morgan Earp. This led to a series of further callings and retributions with federal and county lawmen supporting different sides of the conflict, which came known as the Earp Vendetta Ride. So, you know, this, this these guys were using some serious weapons of the day back then. And, uh, you know, we have the uh, Colt Single Action Army Six Shooter. Fire six shots. Six shots. You don't have to reload it. You got six bullets coming out of this thing. This is a deadly weapon used only for the military, I think. So they should have banned this a long time ago, right? And uh, we also have the Lever Action. The Lever Action Repeater. Fires many times over. Can be reloaded from the side. Can be topped up easily. It's got a magazine. It's magazine fed. It's a repeater. It's a repeater rifle. Did our forefathers think about that? Hell yeah. And here we have a double barrel shotgun. These are the three weapons used back then, the best of the day. So today we ought to be using M16s and AK 47s on full auto. No bullshitting around. That's my opinion. But anyway, uh, to continue on with this story. This sounds like some crap right out of today, to tell you the truth. Uh, according to the ERP version of the events, the fight was in self-defense because the Cowboys, armed in violation of a local ordinance, aggressively threatened, threatened the lawmen, defying a lawful order to hand over their weapons. Damn, this almost sounds like what's going to come down today. <laughs> the Cowboys maintained that they raised their hands, offered no resistance, and they were shot in cold blood by the ERPs. They probably were. Sorting that out, out was telling the truth then and now remains difficult. They don't know what it is, but you got the movie version. You can rent the movie on this. There's all kinds of movies on it. But, you know, Hollywood always twists the facts. But here's something interesting. The, when the Earp's efforts to invest in various businesses were fruitless, Wyatt became a stagecoach shotgun messenger for Wells Fargo guarding shipments of silver bullion until he was appointed Pima County Deputy Sheriff on July 28, 1880. Their work as lawmen was not welcomed by the outlaw cowboy elements who viewed the herbs as badge-toting tyrants who ruthlessly enforced the business interests of the town. So basically it was against the cowboys, against the city people with the uh, law on their side. Why Herbs' role as a hero in a gunfight has been embellished by popular media. That is true. Probably the Cowboys were the good guys in this stuff. That was probably a corrupt cop, for all I know. He had developed a reputation as a no-nonsense, hard-nosed lawman, but prior to the gunfight in eight, October 1881, he had been involved in only one shooting in Dodge City during 1878. Among those involved in a shooting, only Wyatt Earp had any... Virgil Earp had any real experience in combat. Virgil served for three years during the Civil War. So the ranch was owned by the Newman... Clanton's near Charleston, Arizona, and was believed to be the local center for the Cowboys' illegal activities. I don't know what the hell they were doing illegal, probably, you know, raising cows or some crap. While, uh, cattle. <laughs> While Tom and Frank McLaurie worked with the rustlers buying and selling stolen cattle. Stolen. Anyway, many of the ranchers and cowboys who lived in the countryside were resentful of the growing power of the new city folks who increasingly influenced local politics and thus influenced the law in the country. So there you go. Money freaking rules, right? Just back then as it is today. After silver was discovered in the area, tombstone grew extremely rapidly. There you go. It's silver. So I got to say one thing. This is a long story. I'm not going to get through this whole thing. But, uh, you know, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. But, you know, one thing that's different, it has changed. Did they try to ban double barrel shotguns that fire Two rounds in quick succession or both at the same time that fire many pellets at the same time? No. Did they try to ban lever-action rifles? No. 
No. Repeaters? No. And did they try to try to ban single action Colt Army revolvers that fired six shots? No. These are the best weapons at a time. You know, like today that would be like having an A K forty seven and M sixteen. The real stuff. Not even like the stuff you buy for civilians today. That would be like buying the real stuff. And they would be fighting with that. So, you know, I gotta say one thing. You know, if these crazy gun laws come down, you're going to be a crook or that's because you are uh, got a gun. You know what I say to that? You might as well just get yourself some medicinal marijuana like old President Bill Clinton used to do. He used to have his own stash in the White House. This was a secret stash he used to have in the basement with his grow light. And, you know, he's smiling behind these weed plants. This is not a, this is a real photo, you know. This is not even uh, photoshopped or nothing. There he is, Bill Clinton. And, you know, this guy's all right. You know, he used to smoke a lot of weed. And, you know, if you, can, you see, the president doesn't have all the power in the world. There's other people out there like the oil interests that don't let the weed happen. Like both President Bill Clinton and President Barack Obama guarantee you would like, if they knew in their heart they wouldn't get clobbered by the elite, they would let everybody have weed. And they let everybody grow medicinal marijuana. They let everybody grow hemp. And the world would be happy. But you know what? Since you're going to be an outlaw, just like them cowboys back in the OK Corral, you might as well grow your own medicinal marijuana and grow your own hemp. And the hell with all the bullshit. That's all i got to say. And, uh, you know, here's an unknown relative still alive today. This is uh, Jessie Jane. She was back at the OK Corral. I think it was her great-great-great-grandmother. And this today, this is Jessie Jane. She's now in the make-love industry versus the make-war industry. And I got this off of the news unit, which she's going for an Oscar in the pornography business in Las Vegas. But I think her great-great-great-grandmother was back there at the OK Corral doing something. So, But this is Jessie Jane. She's another outlaw fighting for the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of sex, and whatever else there is. So, you know, that she's like pretty much comes under the Ninth Amendment, which is the Ninth Amendment is any of the rights not enumerated in the other, other in the Bill of Rights, the Ten Amendments, that means you got extra rights. So this is the right to pornography. I don't know. But anyway, President, President Barack Obama, you know, I'm telling you right now, his hands are tied on his crap with the gun control. He's like a puppet. You know, if he if he could, in his heart, he wouldn't even give a shit. To tell you the truth, he'd let everybody have all the weapons they want, all the weed they want, all the booze they want, all the pornography they want, and he wouldn't even care. You know, as long as he gets to be president, gets to be the paycheck, gets to make speeches, and go around with all the White House whores, and hoes, whatever you want to call them. I didn't mean to say whores, I meant to say hoes. And same with Bill Clinton. He's the same way, same deal. He couldn't care less if everybody in the whole country smoked weed, grew weed, Grew him, had guns, had booze, had liquor, had, had hoes, and everything else. He doesn't care either. It's just that the elite owned President Clinton, and they owned Barack Obama. So what are we going to have to do? I don't know. This looks like we're going to go back to the OK Corral. But you know what? If you're going to do this, you might as well grow your own weed, too. So, hey, boys and girls, all i got to tell you is that, you know, back in the day, they were using the best weapons of all, of all time back in 1881 at the gunfight of the OK Corral. And guess what? Nobody trying to ban nothing. Nobody. This is like the Wyatt Earps. They're trying to freaking take your weapons away. And actually, those are the bad guys. And Hollywood makes them look like the good guys. So anyway... I have to call on President Clinton and President Barack Obama. You know, just go with your heart. Just go with your heart, guys. And I tell you what, right now, because we know the elite are the real guys pulling the strings. And I know Barack Obama, if he's in your heart, you'd make everybody uh, have a gun and everybody grow weed. He'd be mandatory in the country versus the other way around.